Do you love the look of indoor plants but not the mess? Keep your home clean with houseplants that grow in water. No dirt required. Growing plants in water is a fun and interesting activity for new gardeners, houseplant parents with limited space, and those who have been known to forget to water their plants. Many popular houseplants such as Monstera, Pothos, and Philodendron can all make a home in a container of water. So let's ditch the soil and learn more about this low maintenance way to expand your houseplant collection. Not all plants are suitable for growing in water. You'll want to choose low light plants that tolerate wet roots. If a plant prefers to grow in direct sun, there is a chance the water will become cloudy with bacteria that also thrive with sunlight. So it is best to grow plants with this method in bright indirect light to low light. You can grow plants in water by rooting cuttings or by using a plant that is already rooted in soil. If you use the latter, be sure to wash all the dirt off the roots before submerging. Hanging or creeping plants such as vines or those with woody stems and thick cuticles are often the easiest to root and grow in a water environment. One such plant is pothos. Growing pothos in water works just as well as growing one in soil. Plus, there are so many to choose from, any of which can make a happy home in your plant collection. And here are eight other favorite houseplants to grow in water. No soil, no problem. Tradescantia, commonly known as the inch plant, is a popular and easy to care for houseplant cherished for its striking foliage and vibrant colors. Philodendron typically feature large heart-shaped leaves and can thrive in various light conditions, making them ideal for indoor environments. The very popular and low maintenance peace lily is distinguished by its glossy dark green leaves and delicate white lily-like flowers. Lucky bamboo, despite its name, is just a house plant, not real bamboo. It typically consists of slender green stems that can be grown in various decorative arrangements, often in water. It is easy to care for, making it a low maintenance choice for indoor gardening. Anthorium, also known as the flamingo flower, is a striking plant valued for its stunning heart-shaped flowers that come in various shades, with the most common being red, but they can also be found in pink, white, or even green. The mini monstera is a captivating house plant that bears a striking resemblance to its larger cousin, the monstera deliciosa, but on a smaller scale. It's recognized for its unique split leaves and fast growing vines that are also very easy to propagate. And last, but certainly not least, is the spider plant, known for its distinctive arching leaves with green and white stripes. The baby spiderettes that are produced can easily be propagated into new plants. Here is a list of a few other popular houseplants that can be grown using this method. Now that you've chosen your plant, you must now choose an appropriate container. You can use pretty much any type of container, from glass jars to vases, to unique and intricate propagation stations specific to this method of growing. Either way, clear glass works best and allows you to keep tabs on the root system and cleanliness of the water. Be sure to also choose a container that matches the size of the plant. A newly clipped cutting may only need a small bottle or vase, but an already potted houseplant may require a bit more room. Also, if using vases, you will want to choose a piece with a large enough neck to both insert the plant and possibly remove once it has overgrown its allotted space. Next, you'll need to prepare your water. After filling the container with clean room temperature water, it is recommended to allow the water to sit for 24 hours to allow any chemicals to dissipate. Tap water, rainwater, or well water all work well. However, bottled water or water run through a reverse osmosis system may be too devoid of nutrients for your plants to thrive. Once you have your plant, container, and water ready to go, you may want to consider some decorative gravel, marbles, or pebbles at the bottom of the vase. However, these extra materials may require a bit more maintenance to keep the water clean. You may also want to use chopsticks, toothpicks, or cork to help keep the foliage upright and out of the water. The only part of the plant you want in the water is the root system. As mentioned earlier, it is best to grow the plant in indirect sunlight to help prevent unwanted algae growth. From here, be sure to keep an eye on the water level and top off as needed. You'll want to change the water frequently, every few weeks or so, or if it becomes cloudy. You can also trim any roots that start to look unruly. 
if your houseplant begins to grow too large for the space provided, you may want to consider transferring it to a pot with soil. This will allow for more stability and room to spread its roots. Your plant will receive nutrients from the water and other elements from the air, but a small dose of fertilizer can help maintain a healthy plant. Simply add a weak solution of a good quality water-soluble fertilizer to the container every four to six weeks. This solution should consist of just one quarter of the recommended strength. If your plants begin to yellow, remove the plant, rinse the root system, and provide it with fresh water. This may have been caused by too much fertilizer. Be sure to also change the water every two to four weeks to flush out any excess salts from the fertilizer. Another method to growing plants in water is to propagate cuttings. A lot of different types of plants can be rooted in water. Cuttings from vining plants such as pothos root quickly in just a glass of water with just a quick snip of a stem. Plants that sucker or produce offshoots such as snake plants or the money plant can also be propagated using this method. To start new plants from existing vining plants, you want to snip a three to four inch healthy stem just below a leaf node. Place the cutting in a container with clean water, ensuring the node is submerged. The cutting should be stored in an area that receives indirect light and await the development of roots, which can take anywhere from 10 days to several weeks. For more detailed information on propagating vining plants, see the link in the description for a relevant video. To propagate other types of leafy houseplants, you can either remove an offshoot from the mother plant or take cuttings from an existing leaf. For example, on the very popular snake plant, you can remove one of the small pups or plantlets growing along the main root system once it has grown sufficient roots of its own. Or you can snip off a leaf and insert the cut end into just enough water to cover the bottom of the leaf. As mentioned earlier, place the cuttings in bright indirect sunlight until the roots develop. Herbs can be propagated in a similar way. Whether you want more plants to grow outdoors during the growing season, or you want to continue that steady flow of fresh flavor throughout the winter months, many types of herbs can be grown in water, including basil, thyme, mint, oregano, and sage. Beginning with the stems of herb plants from your garden, clip stems about six inches long and remove the leaves from the bottom four inches. Place the stems in jars filled with water and place them in a sunny window to grow. Be sure to clip each leaf as it grows to full size, as this will help to encourage the stem to produce more leaves at the top. The herbs will continue to grow for a few months using this method. You're now equipped with the knowledge to harness the power of water and expand your plant collection. Let us know in the comments below if you've had success either growing or propagating plants using this method. If you found this video informative and inspiring, please subscribe for more tips from the Gardening Know-How team. Thank you for watching and happy gardening!